Dr. Jessica Friedman from Med Edits Medical Admissions, and I wanted to do a video about COVID and residency admissions and the residency match. And first and foremost, I hope you are all staying safe and staying sane um, and washing your hands and practicing social distancing. And you know, this is obviously an unprecedented crisis that the country and the world are going through. And as a result, there are unprecedented things happening in medical education and in medical admissions and residency admissions. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about today, and it's March 18th, just because I think it's important to really date this video, because obviously this is an evolving situation and things are going to be changing. And we do hope to keep you up to date on things as they do change. Um, but it is, it is important to understand that because nothing like this has ever happened in, in our lifetimes, that it is very likely that residencies um, and the AMC and ERES and the NRMP are gonna do things that are unprecedented as well. Um, you know, as we go through the next residency admission cycle. Um, as all of you know, you know, match day is actually, you know, this week um, when everybody's going to find out if they matched um, and they should all be starting their internships and residencies, you know, in July. Um, but the real big question is about current um, medical students and what will happen to them with regards to their clinical rotations, first and foremost. Um, you know, first and second year students or preclinical students, since many schools have, you know, shifted to 18 month curriculums at this point, preclinical curriculums, they have basically all shifted to online learning. Um, and, you know, that includes small group sessions, things that typically play, take place in a clinical arena. So, preclinical classes, you know, all of those students have, you know, been pulled from, you know, the actual classroom and those meetings are happening, happening virtually and their educations are continuing. And for many, that really isn't that much of a change from what they did previously because with so many lectures being recorded online, there are many students who don't go to class anyway. <laughs> it's the reality. So that really hasn't changed. Um, the big question becomes what happens um, both with let's say first year students who have their summer off who um, were planning on doing research this summer in their desired specialty and you know what happens if that research isn't happening um, you know and it's that it's, it's a really tough situation what I would recommend that students do in that situation since I think this could be the reality for many first year medical students is to reach out to your attendings, you know, perhaps the attending that you were supposed to be doing research with this summer and see if there's anything that you can be doing that could be done from home, you know, so whether that's crunching data or writing papers or, you know, doing retrospective case studies or retrospective studies or case reports, I think there are a lot of things that you can potentially work on from home. So, you know, think about really, regardless of what year you are in medical school, if you have extra time on your hands and you have a sense of the specialty you'd like to pursue, think about reaching out to the, you know, to the people who are doing this research and finding out if there are any um, opportunities that, you know, you could avail yourself of that you could do from home. Keep in mind that anyone who practices clinical medicine right now is overwhelmed and stressed, even if they aren't on the front line, such as an emergency medicine or something of that nature, because physicians um, in all specialties are going to be called upon, uh, you know, to kind of help out with this crisis. So everybody in medicine, whether in an academic setting or in a community setting, is is really feeling quite busy and quite overwhelmed at this moment. And I, I don't anticipate that that's going to end anytime soon. Um, speaking with my friends from literally all over the country who practice in various places, everyone is really feeling this now and everyone is, um, you know, anticipating this deluge of patients, um, you know, in, in the coming months. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. Now, the big question is what happens with clinical rotation? Students are being pulled from the hospital, the Association of American Medical Colleges, as well as um, AACOM, asked for medical schools to pull their students from clinical rotations. And while that there was a limited time frame for the amount of time that they asked to pull their students from those rotations, um, I anticipate that that is going to be extended because I don't think that this crisis is going to, um, it's going to get worse before it gets better, let's put it that way. Um, there also right now is um, a shortage, it seems, around the country for personal protective equipment. So obviously that PPE or personal protective equipment 
needs to go towards the caregivers who are actually offering the care, not to suggest that medical students don't offer care. They offer extremely important care. <laughs> they're, they're, they're really very helpful to have um, when, when you're dealing with volume of patients. Um, I know that from personal experience, but if there's a limits for, of PPE and uh, you know, the, the first and top priority here is that we keep our students safe, um, they're not going to let students into a clinical setting until they can do so safely. Um, so, you know, the question is like, let's say that you have some very important core rotations that you will be missing as a result of being pulled from the clinical arena due to COVID. Um, I do think that, first of all, I think some medical schools, what they're planning on doing is they're planning on shifting the curriculum a bit. So maybe you'll have less elective time in your fourth year. Maybe you'll have less vacation in your fourth year um, to, in order to satisfy those requirements. I also think they're going to find alternate ways, sorry, they're also going to find alternate ways for you to, um, hold on, sorry. Um, they're also gonna find alternate ways for you to satisfy those, those requirements. And, you know, in the past, um, you know, you had to have a certain amount of clinical time in different specialties, and there was no getting around that. But, you know, I, I think because, again, this is unprecedented, and, um, you know, I, I think there will be exceptions made, um, you know, that had never been made in the past, okay? Now, the big question is, if you are a third year student, and you are gearing up to apply to residency in the fall, this probably impacts you the most. And why is that? Um, and you know, you know why, <laughs> but people who are earlier in their medical education may not understand. The rotations that you do in the late spring and summer and early fall of your fourth year are extremely important in terms of making you a competitive and desirable residency applicant because you typically will be doing either sub eyes in your desired specialty that you're applying to, whether that's internal medicine, emergency medicine, general surgery, or you will be doing electives in a specialty you're applying to, let's say orthopedic surgery, ENT, ophthalmology. So the question becomes, what happens now if you can't do those rotations that are crucial for you to be a competitive applicant, okay? And number one, I, I want you to talk to you know whoever your mentors are at your school, whether that's the chair, whether that's the program director, and ask them this question. Okay, ask them what they advise you to do. Because let's say you are applying for um, ENT and you right now have your first um, rotation in ENT scheduled for June of 2020. Okay, and of course nobody has canceled any clinical rotations for June 2020. But what if that happens? What if students are pulled from the hospital in June 2020 um, and you are not able to do that ENT rotation and thus not able to get a letter from an ENT physician, okay? So then you won't be competitive for an ENT residency. Um, so you, the first thing that you need to do is you need to speak with what whomever your mentor is at your school and ask them what did they advise? Is there a way for them to somehow do some sort of virtual um, type of rotation with you? Um, is there something else that they can do so they can get to know you, so they can write you a strong letter of reference? Now, I think it's comforting to know that everybody's in this boat, right? So anybody who is applying for residency in this upcoming season is in the same boat. And so they're all going to have these issues with regards to getting letters of reference. Now, I can tell you right now that clinicians who are in academic medicine this is the furthest thing from their mind. They are all just right now dealing with this crisis that is developing um, and that, you know, sort of anticipating what's going to come. They are not thinking about this at all. It is not high on their priority list, okay? So this is where we come in and, um, I, you know, we are certainly staying up to date with what is going on at all medical schools around the country, what decisions are being made with regards to things like um, clinical rotations, um, you know, are students going to be pulled? There's also discussion of all away rotations being canceled. Um, so that, you know, let's say you were applying for ophthalmology and you were hoping to do a rotation in Philadelphia at your top choice program. And now those rotations are going to be canceled for all visiting students. Um, you know, this is a real possibility. It's already happening at some medical schools. Um, but again, 
everybody's in the same boat. So nobody is doing any of these audition rotations. If you're not doing them, nobody's doing them, right? So in, in some way, the onus is going to be on the residency directors and the residency programs to sort of figure out which applicants they like the most and, um, and who's competitive, okay? So this is something we're gonna be having ongoing discussions about. I don't want anyone to panic. I want you to think about if you're applying for residency in the fall, you at this point know what specialty you're applying for most likely, and you need to think about what you can do to, to stay involved in that specialty. Again, reach out to your mentors, find some research that can be done that doesn't require in-person meetings, and let's just wait and see what happens with regards to those clinical rotations. When can you get back into the clinical setting? Okay. Um, and again, this is all just really completely up in the air at this point, um, you know, but I do think that it's going to be kind of ongoing. Then as we look forward to residency interviews, which, you know, can start as early as September, I think that there is a high likelihood that that entire timetable will be pushed um, forward so that instead of the vast majority of interviews, let's say, taking place in November and December, maybe the vast majority of interviews will be taking place in January. Maybe they would even shift the match to take place later. Again, there will be things done in the next, you know, in the next year that have never been done before. So I don't think we can anticipate exactly what's going to happen, but I could see timetables shifting completely. Um, you know, because obviously, first of all, the number one priority is taking care of the public and taking care of all the patients and making sure that our medical schools and our medical institutions are able to do that well, and they're not overwhelmed. Um, and then, you know, kind of medical education will do what they need to do in order to make sure that that happens. So I, I you know, there, there will be, I think, some, you know, potential changes that will happen that have never happened in the past, okay? Um, MedEdits is here to keep you positive and um, to try to help you come up with ideas um, and to sort of try to, you know, um, engage our community and, you know, make everyone realize that we're all in this together. Um, and, you know, and so if you have any ideas of what we can do to, again, bring all of you together um, to help you to kind of stay informed with regards to what's going on, um, please email me, info, I-N-F-O, at mededits.com. Um, we're, we're really, you know, I'm home with, you know, with my family and my kids now. Um, and, you know, granted, I don't, I don't practice clinical medicine anymore. So this was always, and, you know, my full-time job, but certainly um, we all have more time on our hands. And, um, you know, so we are, we are here to help you. We are here to, you know, to do videos or to do, you know, live chats with you, you know, whatever you think will be helpful to help you get through this very difficult time and stressful time, um, you know, we, we really want to serve as a resource. Um, so please email me, info, info at mededits.com. Of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel and like us on Facebook because we are thinking of starting some different Facebook groups in light of this crisis. Um, and, you know, and stay positive, social distance, wash your hands, um, and go outside and get fresh air when you can. <laughs> <laughs> to keep your sanity, I think. Um, so everyone take care and please stay safe and we will, you know, keep you updated on developments as they happen. Thank you so much. <laughs>